Oh, sure. Right. I'd like to call to order City Council work session. July 17th, it's now five o'clock. There will be a regular meeting tonight following the work session as well as a special meeting. We are all here. We have only one item on the agenda. And again, I'd like to remind council to refrain from asking questions until the staff presentations are complete. So it's 3.1, the staff will provide the council with the background information for policy direction on future options for four city owned facilities located at Litchfield Road and Western Avenue. Facilities and fleet manager, Christine Smith will present. Christine. Good evening, mayor, council members. Um, I'm here to talk about four selected facilities for your consideration as far as their future use. And I'm trying to get my buttons to work. <laughs> battery? I don't know. Your battery in the keyboard? Yes. Good. I'm being initiated. Excuse That's me. That's all right. <laughs> it took three people to turn my iPad on. <laughs> I tell you. Oh, so on. relax. Battery or something? Keyboard? Hey, I've been known how to push buttons for people. <laughs> that might be okay. Oh. <laughs> no, Bill gets that honor. <laughs> oh. Not Bill. Bill. Yeah. 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 It was not for my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Mine either. Or me. Who would have said something like that? Hey. Are we set now? I only five ten minutes on. I'm sorry. What? I just tried. Oh, For the audience that is really listening, we're having problems with the thing. presentation. So, hold on a minute. All right, we'll do it every time. All right, we'll start again. I don't know how to get rid of that little screen, um, but Mayor, Council Members, we are here to talk about um, four facilities located at Western and Litchfield. Um, as part of this presentation, we're gonna review some background information um, to review the facility's master plan, the general building information, their conditions, we're gonna talk about the campus, which includes their, the parking for this area, uh, as well as budget impacts and other items to take into consideration as you evaluate options for these locations. Okay. Anybody but the IT guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. So, Javier, are, somebody stay up there. Yay. Okay, nobody's going to stay right. up there. Okay. Yeah, can I call somebody that will come and sit beside her so she can help it through if she has it again? Or are you going to be fast moving up? Okay. Go ahead. All right, so um, what I have in front of you now is a, our photos of the location. So one is an aerial showing the call center, the old city hall, the squad center, and the Pecos, um, excuse me, not Pecos, the police evidence building. Um, in addition to that, to try to orient you, we also have them listed on the right-hand side. These are four buildings and four separate parcels they add up to 47,000 square feet parcel size, and the buildings are close to about 9,500 uh, 9, square feet. The buildings on the very uh, southwest corner of this complex um, are owned by other entities, and we have Sunny's Boxing and um, Barbershop, and we also have the Pure Patio um, working in this main um, building in between. And then also to the very right hand corner, we have the Americ um, building, which um, provides tax and immigration services. 
So I want to take you back a little bit to talk briefly about the facilities master plan, which is why I'm here today. In the facilities master plan, um, this plan talks about future city operations and growth needs. And as part of this plan, uh, it was recommended that once these properties were vacated, that they should be surplus because there are no additional city operational needs for these locations. So I'm going to go briefly into each building to talk about, again, their size, as well as what may be unique about them, um, as well as some additional information. So the call center is our oldest facility. It was built in 1946, and it is about 69 years old. Uh, it's just over 1,000 square feet at 1,190 square feet, and the lot size is just over 6,000 square feet. It's been used for a variety of city functions. Um, and the last function was the 911 call center. They vacated the facility in May of 2014 and moved to the new telecommunications facility at the Goodyear Municipal Complex. Some of the unique aspects, uh, if you see the red circle up there on the right-hand corner, that is depicting where the time capsule is that is um, scheduled to be open in 2021 as part of the 75th anniversary. Um, it is uh, filled with memorabilia and historical documents, and that will be an exciting day. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, we have a raised floor still in that location uh, because of the IT functions. We also recently completed environmental studies for all of these buildings um, so that we're prepared to move forward if that's the decision. And for this particular facility, we did identify some small um, areas where asbestos and lead is present. And that's pretty typical for buildings of this age and can be managed depending on the use of the facilities in the future. <coughs> Old City Hall Police Administration um, is a little bit towards the left when you look at that picture in front of us. Um, that's the, that building was built in 1963. It's about 54 years old, 3,400 square feet, and the parcel is just over 14,800 square feet. Um, the unique features here, there's a lot of offices. Um, there's also um, some evidence of police uh, activity. Uh, there's a pull-down chain door. There's also a small courtyard. This building, too, has small um, levels of asbestos and lead that would have to be addressed um, if there's ever any remodeling or refurbishment to this building. The police quad center um, was also built. Uh, in 1955, it's 62 years old. Uh, 2,800 square feet on a parcel about 6,000 square feet. Uh, unique features here includes holding cells with toilet facilities, uh, stainless steel countertops that are built in as part of the um, cabinets, um, and also we found some additional asbestos and lead evident in this building as well. Police evidence. Uh, actually, we secured this facility in 1990. However, it was built in 1953. It's 64 years old, uh, just over 2,000 square feet, and the parcel is the largest of um, all combined, and it's just over 20,000 square feet. The unique features here um, is that it's all red brick on the exterior, and many of the office walls are also red brick, uh, currently covered with drywall. Um, there is metal security fencing inside. Uh, there still remains a bank vault from its original owner, which I believe was Valley Bank. Um, and it, too, has a variety of offices. This facility also has asbestos and lead. Um, in addition to that, we found some mold due to some leaking areas in the restroom area that has been remediated and removed. Has been. Yes, it has. So one of the important aspects of this property is parking. Um, what I'd like to point out is in the areas where you see the blue stars, we have various parking that is controlled by the city. 
the area around the red um, belongs to the other occupants on this site. And the Americ's location on that right-hand um, corner has no on-site parking. They rely completely on the public spaces along Western Avenue. In total, the city has about 55 spaces. Um, the other businesses combined have about 20, and then the on-street is about 30. And one thing I'll point out is it's scattered throughout the location, and that's just something to factor in, maybe depending on um, how these locations may use, be used in the future. Okay, so we're going to talk about different items to consider as you review the, the future for these parcels. Uh, as I stated earlier, um, these buildings are aging, but they're in fair condition. There are some environmental issues that will need to be addressed uh, if there is any tenant improvements or remodeling. Uh, as long as these items are contained in their current form, um, they don't pose a hazard. Um, but again, if we touch them, that will change. So the ongoing maintenance in their current state is estimated to cost about 30,000 annually. And that cost is expected to increase over time. Um, for example, we include utilities, we have water, we have uh, electric, we have maintenance needs, pest control, various repairs. And one of the reasons we keep the utilities on is because we have to support the fire suppression systems, uh, we also need to take care of the landscaping to make sure that uh, we don't become an eyesore for the, the area. And it also just shows a presence versus a completely vacated area. Long term, there are going to be needs for these buildings, in part because there um, was an effort to keep the buildings um, operational as evidence that they were used all the way up until January of 2017 for the most part. But um, several of these systems are reaching their life end. Um, HVAC units uh, range anywhere from five to six years old to closer to 20 years old. So we've already met their life expectancy and those will be needed, uh, need to be changed in the future. The evidence building in particular will need to be um, re-roofed or an additional coatings added in the, within the next five years. Uh, the asphalt also for the entire complex is very old. Um, there is evidence of alligator cracking and other needs um, in order to try to prevent the pavement from further degradation. So if I think about it over the next five years, we're looking at over $200,000 um, just to try to keep the buildings in their current condition. And I can tell you that will be rough. Um, those, some of those systems, for example, the fire sprinklers will eventually need to be changed out. Uh, so we're buying time right now. The facilities master plan, the general plan, and the um, PAD and, and subsequent ordinance are items that have been before this council in the past. Uh, the facilities master plan is a plan that uh, identifies or identified the space uh, needs when it was first approved by council in 2016. It also tries to project future needs depending on how the city operations grow. Uh, as part of this plan, it was identified that once these facilities were vacated, that they could be surplused. And in part, that's because operationally there's no need. Uh, and future growth can be accommodated at the 157th Avenue campus, uh, as well as the new PD Ops Center, and potentially the future City Hall um, that you're very familiar with. Uh, the general plan that was adopted in 2014 uh, also identifies this area um, as a village, and it has um, some um, a special interest because of its location on Western um, and as well as the neighborhood interest in this particular area. 
the um, Western Avenue planned area development and the ordinance uh, was passed in 2008. And this allows that parcel to be used um, eventually for commercial purposes and that are um, sized for that type of um, community um, amenity, if you want to um, call it that, such as smaller scale businesses. Um, it could be uh, anything from restaurant or bars to um, antique stores, cultural facilities, et cetera. Some uses require permits and other uses are prohibited. For example, pawn shops, um, automobile service stations, body shops, and things of that nature. So when you keep all of those, um, all of that background in mind, uh, we've brought, we're providing you some potential options to consider. And as part of considering these options, it's important to remember that there is ongoing cost to support these facilities. Um, any of these options can be considered in all or part. And they are in the order of potential costs for the city. Um, and referencing, again, the facility master plan, selling was the first option uh, because the city, again, has no operational need for this location. In summary, we have four vacant buildings, um, a lot size of over 47,000 square feet, um, and we have the master plan to consider as well as the general plan and ordinance. And with that, um, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. All right, council, discussion? I have a question. Joanne? Thank you for the presentation. Um, you know, obviously we have very few buildings of this age in our city, so they're, they're important. And, um, you know, the fact that it has that time capsule there is, is pretty cool and, and neat. Uh, besides knowing what its uses have been for our city, um, and I, I was told that long ago that the Boy Scouts originally housed in one of those buildings um, that it started. Is there any other historic value? Did, you know, like, did President Reagan sleep here? I mean, is there something that we're missing that has not been investigated? just to see if there's anything that we're missing in age. And maybe there's not because we've had it for so long. I just don't know. I don't know the mm -hmm. history completely of all the buildings. I've just, you know, of the things I've been told over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I would be interested in that. That obviously doesn't change the, the cost and the price of what we're facing with it. But um, there's, you know, sometimes those historic things you, you can't value so well. And so I, I'm just curious if you... you has anybody investigated that, or have you heard of anything else? Um, Councilwoman Osborne, I can follow up on that. As far as um, during the city ownership time, what I have been able to find is that it was used by um, fire volunteers, and I'm not sure if anybody else has any other information for tonight. Okay. Thank you. That's my question. Joe? To me, I think it would be helpful... Um, the cost of the rehab, each one of those buildings to a standard that we can actually put somebody in there without um, having some li legal liabilities. Second of all, what would that value be once that happens? Is it gonna be exceeding what we can actually sell it for? So maybe then rehabbing it might not be an effort because the cost to rehab it, to put it in conditions to sell, value-wise may be like a sunk, putting money down a, a rabbit hole. And then the third is, is there value in actually leveling the buildings on the raw land and seeing if we can get somebody to maybe put something up in its place? So those are the three areas that, that kind of jump out at me uh, to decide what to do with these, these particular buildings. Thank you. Jerry? Okay, I, I guess I think about this two ways, with my heart and with my head. I think the, the heart, when I, I look at these buildings, we don't have 
any buildings, like you go on down the street to Avenue and you see what they've done with that area. If this is something, and I don't know if it's been shopped around as a possible um, to put other things in there before we decide whether there's value to rehab it at all. Because um, my head says, well, financially, this isn't the best. It's These buildings have a lot of problems. But when I, I look at that area and knowing that the shopping center across the street is closed and, you know, the Ace Hardware across the street is closed, I don't know. And I guess that might be a question for Michelle. If, if Is this an area that would be marketable to kitschy little restaurants or antique or, or like a little cluster of funky little shops and with pure patio. I mean, there's some cool stuff there now in the gym and stuff. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Loretano. I think, you know, if we had looked into this um, and we have thought about that because we certainly appreciate Sunny's being there as well as Pure Patio. And I think, uh, you know, what we have encountered is because, you know, they're willing, willing to take a chance in that area. Um, what we've found is that it isn't very marketable for at this point. We, we'd really have to rehab it and see what we could get after we rehabbed it. And then if we wanted to try to attract something like that, um, it, it certainly is possible, I would say, um, somewhat unlikely. Um, and then if we, if we did, if you went through those different scenarios of what you'd want to do, I think it would be, you know, depending on, on what um, you made it, you know, you improved it to be, to look like. And we certainly have had um, some folks be interested in that. And I think this might be part of the discussion is in the higher education area. Um, those two buildings that are over there that look like the... Um, the old, uh, let's see if it's the old city hall um, up there that kind of are connected that look kind of like they could be a campus. We certainly had some interest there, but um, usually well, I, I can tell you when they've gone and looked at the area, they've kind of said, no, uh, we, probably we need more around us for that. So it's really someone who would be willing to take a chance on it. And so we haven't had much success in, in trying to kind of attract that kitschy sort of, sort of thing. And, and a lot of it's about. just because the there's not a lot of stuff exactly. in the other corners. Exactly. There's not a lot around there. And, you know, we certainly have had people talk about wanting to look. You know, you had um, Dave Scholl kind of saying, um, you know, looking at that area and saying, do you have any old buildings? And we definitely get that that question a lot. Um, but I'm not sure that that, I'm not sure if we were to, um, you know, rehab it with that expectation that that would, that would be met. Okay. So I'd be, I'd be hesitant to do that. No, I, th I think that gives me a lot of good perspective. Thank you. Well, excuse me, Wally. Oh, well, I would like to know how much it would cost us to demolish it completely. And then possibly... Michelle, um, can you kind of stay up there? Do you, excuse me, sorry for interrupting. That's okay. That's sorry. Go ahead. And then I would like to... Uh, I, I would like a clarification of something you were talking about on the 911 system because I didn't... I couldn't hear what you said. Uh, and it had... Uh, you said it has something because of the IT system. What, what does it have? It's just the raised floor, uh, oh. so that that would have to be removed. <laughs> I thought it was really something exciting that I missed. That's why I wrote it down. Yeah, I know it's got a raised floor. I've seen it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and then, um, uh, let's see. I would like to know, uh, I, I just can't believe it costs us 30000 for upkeep. I mean... Have we been upkeeping the 911 building that's been empty since May of 14? Have we been paying utilities in that building? That is correct. In part, it's like um, pouring money down a rabbit hole. It, it is difficult. And in part, if you don't condition the buildings at all, then you start having the building even further um, start experiencing more problems. Uh, things can start peeling, the wood can start cracking, there can be all it sorts of It already looks like that, dear. I know. You're talking to the choir here. I've seen it. I've walked the buildings. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I know. I, I just didn't realize we were expending that amount of money on those empty buildings, and I'm very disappointed we've been doing that. Well, it's but I'd of... like to know how much it would cost us to demo it completely. It won't cost us anything to sell it other than a commission, I guess. But I, 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 I'm really not convinced we're going to get any buyers that would want to buy out those those buildings so 
and we can't use them because you've already said there's lead in it and there's this and there's mold and there's that, so we can't give it to anybody because they're going to have to come in and completely re redo the buildings themselves, and I don't know anyone that has that deep of pockets to start to do those in that area. Wish we did, but I don't think we do. Bill? I, uh, I had like three thoughts going through my mind. Um, with Michelle sitting there, I'll start with that one. Um, you know, you talked about the ability to utilize these existing buildings. If they were demoed and now this was property, does that raise the likelihood that perhaps somebody may want to pick up the empty parcel and put something in down there? You can say no. <laughs> I would say no. It doesn't. Uh, in my opinion, I think that um, having that, uh, the buildings there and having what you're really looking at in terms of like an economic development or, or some kind of, is really a lease, you know, type of situation, not really something, that's my opinion, you know, sell it, to be able to sell it would be really rough to get it into selling condition and then, uh, but to be able to lease it at a certain rate, I mean, I think that's the real strength that the, that the city has with keeping those buildings. So you're saying keep rehab them, keep them, and try to lease them is better than tearing them all down? I mean, if you're asking my opinion, yes, yes that's what I would say. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the thanks. The other question that I had um, was, uh, I think, it was a second to last slide. So can we go backward? Mm -hmm. There's, uh, on a couple of these areas, we say missed opportunity for other city needs and interests, and it's in the partnership one and the demo one and the sell one, so I'm assuming it's in the lease one, but um, if the facility master plan called for us to abandon or surplus these buildings, then how is that really a con? Is this missed opportunity? If I don't, I'm trying to picture the missed opportunity when we had intended to get rid of it anyway. So how does that fall into? That's more of a general statement that if the city has, or the council has other interests, if uh, things change, um, that maybe this property could provide uh, an opportunity in the future. Okay, but what, so, and just to be clear, you had talked about we're 30,000 annual in expenses for the buildings. And within the next five years, we're gonna need more than 200,000 to make major repairs. I didn't wanna put words in your mouth, is that? Yes, and I would say that's partial repairs. Okay, but they're major. So if we say five years at you know, 30,000 a year to maintain them, that's 150,000 plus another, and we're close to a half a million dollars for property that we may or may not be able to lease in an area that has extremely limited parking and um, and there's really not, I want to say there's not an attract, I mean, there's nothing drawing drawing anyone there. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking questions and making a statement at the same time. So for me, um, I just assume uh, we need to get, we need to save the money, get it off the books, tear it down, and perhaps let, put that property up for sale and see if someone wants to build something there. That's where I, that's where I'm I stand. interject. So what is the value of the property as long as he asks that question? You know, what square foot, how much are they selling square footage? With or without buildings. That, with the, without the buildings, the land itself. Just land. Because there's the value. Yeah. yeah. Do you have value? I have some preliminary information. Um, we won't hold you to it exactly, so just kind of <laughs> give us a ballpark. Yeah. Um, I have an estimated value of um, 207000 for the properties in the northwest corner and approximately 101000 for the building uh, on Western, the old evidence building. If I could just, could I just add a little bit to that, um, to the, 
you know, the value of the property and just the thought of, of demoing the property, and the only reason that comes to mind is, is kind of the neighborhood and the area that you've got around there and kind of them... Um, you know, vacant land, we're having trouble moving a lot of property in that area as it is. And so it, that's one of the reasons for my answer earlier is that you would like to keep something up there nice and maybe not vacant and maybe leased out. You're not going to get much money for it for a lease. Even if you fix it up, you're not going to get much money for it. So it's not going to be a money maker. But if you demo the property, and, and is why I gave that answer, is that if you demo the property, you've kind of got vacant property there and, and not a whole lot of chances to, to, to sell it for a good price, unless you want to sell it for something very low. But getting someone to build on it would be tough. Any other questions? Yes, Brandon. So the area along the one, the building, one building along Western, can we that back parking lot, could that be taken as well for a building? I'm thinking of like the library in Avondale and also the boys, the boys and girls club that built like two story mm. type buildings. They redid that area. Mm -hmm. If we were to give like a nonprofit or something, the, the land for free to build some kind of community type service area or something like that, some deal like that, that would attract yeah, and I think down. that's a discussion for, for you to have. I mean, for me to answer that would be, I think that's possible that certainly a social service need might might really want to, to be there. Yeah. Yes. And then have we had anything across the street, any movement at all from any of the... No. Any, from the any, south, any, the shopping center there? No, we haven't. And we've, we thought we, you know, we thought we were moving towards something exciting for it, but then it turned out not to be so. Um, just recently, um, we had a meeting with someone that we thought might, might be able to help us move it. So we're, we're trying to certainly get in touch with those property owners and get them to kind of move it. It's, a, it's got a very interesting history, and I'm sure Brian knows it much better than I do, but, um, uh, and, and kind of why um, it's not somebody you know the owner doesn't really want to do something with it right now but it's just it's we definitely are reaching out and trying to get because that is a big that is a big part of of why you know that area isn't really viable right now yeah because they got a large and my speaker is huge i'm sorry no this thing is <laughs> like because no, that's parking lot's huge and they got that nice crosswalk right there that lights up to go across back and forth there so Put it uh, still closer to you because somehow it blocks it a bit. Thank you. Yeah. So the parking lot across the street there is that nice crosswalk that goes back and forth there too. So mm -hmm. is that alleyway there? Is that part of the city too? Or is that a um, something else in between? It's a, it is a shared alley um, with the residents and our property. The one in between the hair cutting and your patio? Um, oh, are you talking about? He's across the street. No, I'm in the. I mean, there's a little space in between the hair cutting and your patio. Yeah, let me so that is a public um, walkway. show this. So if you look at the map in front of you, you can see the area in the red as well as the gold. And that, that is an easement area. So we do share egress and ingress with those properties. Okay. But that little tiny... That's, just, that's the owners that are there now, that little spot. We walked it down last month. Yes. Was are, it last are you Monday? talking about towards the 160? Towards area? Western, off Western. He's talking about in the middle of where that parking it's area private. is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Christopher knows it's private. Yeah, Christopher knows it's private. Lately. Okay. Yeah. It's I'm just private. curious. Yeah. It's private. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. North, yeah. South, private. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think yeah, that's the only uh, questions I, I had. Yeah, everything like in options. red is in private. I like, I like a mix of, of a couple of the options together. Go ahead. Do you have another question? Go ahead. I was a question. It's more of a statement in my opinion. But All right. You want to wait or you want to now? I'm good. 501 three C's. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of them. They're all looking around for some place so that, that, and that's something if we do, we have to cost. It's going to be there. Um, but what does that say on reputation for the city or for the community saying we haven't given up on you, historical Goodyear? Uh, we're trying to add to it. Um, they're old buildings, but they're, they're just the type of buildings um, that those organizations want, and they are a cost. And everybody that does it, Surprise does it, Havendale does it. We don't do much of that. And people always ask, how come? I always see we don't have a building. Whoops, now we got some buildings. It's going to cost us, but 
So you have to think of the humanistic side of it. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but in the whole compass of what we're doing in this city, that isn't a lot of money. Um, and I just think it tells historical Goodyear, we're, we're not giving up on you. We're still, we're still thinking about you. There is some action going in the building on the, uh, on the commercial building on that corner. Lots of action. Nothing that's being talked about now, nothing in it, but it, it's a hot building where Lockheed was. It's a lot of, lot of action, a lot of people looking at it, important. So, so do we just kind of you know, hold off and start repairing these buildings and get them in, in, in good shape? Um, that gives us, it gives us, you know, more of a, a city because it's around the corner from Western, but it's still part of it. Who knows? Maybe this is what it would take to move it on. So I'm, I'm kind of in between on this. So, all right. Thank yeah. you. Joanne? I, I appreciate that, Georgia, because I'm, I'm right in line with your thinking. You know, I asked the question about the historic value just as a question, but that really wasn't my, my feeling about this area. And I, I can tell you, historically, there was a committee I was on, I don't a billion years ago, that was the um, revitalization, was the revitalization I was task you, yes. force of Litchfield Road. <laughs> and um, and we, you know, we had, we had um, citizens, we had businesses, we had, you know, um, historic people of the area all looking at Litchfield Road. And that's where Edward Thompson funeral. That's and and it was the discussion, what do we do here? And we've never, ever given up on this area. And um, Western has little by little had art pieces put in. We've had grant funding for, for things. We've tried to um, give it appeal and, and, um, and I'm so thankful for the businesses that have continued to, to try to stay there. And, and that's, very, um, that's very good. But I go to what you just said. I go to the fact that we have a fire station that we are you know, exiting out of there. Um, we do not have a human services department in our city. And so we rely on all those nonprofits to come to our city to serve the needs of the people that we have, and this is a great location for that. To your point, yes, it costs money. Head and heart, I totally get it. If anybody just as a, as a financial person would say, oh, bulldoze it. You know what, this is the, the ridiculous to put that kind of money into it. You just said it was like half a million dollars to put into it, and you just said it was only worth about 300000 all of it together. I get it. Bulldoze it. But that's not the point. What are all those homes directly behind there going to be thinking of this area? And that we're vacating another point. That shopping center across the street, Michelle, <laughs> <laughs> I know how hard you try. I know how hard Brian's tried. I know how everybody and, has uh, tried. Yeah, I would say for the it's, last, I've been on 12 years. Oh, we've been working on it for 12 years. It's been 20 years, years that people have talked. To, oh, yeah, easy. So, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely something that everyone has tried for. But I think that um, it will serve a purpose and it will serve a need. And um, I think that's far better than having a bunch of dirt that looks deserted, that makes the neighborhood not feel that it's going up rather than being demolished. And it so that says is, we don't care. That's right. And that's, that's my position. Joe? Yeah, I, I appreciate um, the concerns. For me, I can't see spending a half a million dollars. That's just my own personal perspective. Molly? Michelle, where are you? Can you give us any insight on the true value property? Is it in Goodyear, and is it going to stay vacant, or who owns it, or? What are they doing with it? Yeah, and I do. I need to get some background on that for you to get that to you, but I because it is in the city of Goodyear. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, and I hear oh, Councilmember Hampton. Information. I, oh, oh okay. Yay. Sorry, Michelle. That's okay. We have depth Katie. in this staff. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, we have a submittal right now, an application for a church user who's working on the project. So that actually should be coming before the City Council in the okay. next month or so. All right. All right. Then that's okay. people. That's, that's traffic density. 
Um, I think it was well, Wally next. Yeah, I yes, was going to suggest that if we, I don't know what we're going to do with the property because I spoke my piece in executive session and I'm not going to do it again. However, if we do demolish it, I was going to recommend we do a, 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 a park, a non-passive park there, which we could do very easily. Sherry? A na little neighborhood park. Sherry? Yeah, I, I, I agree. If, if, if it ends up being demolished, we have to, we cannot leave just a dirt, dirt yeah. land there. That's not fair to the people that live there. I would like to see if we have at least take that step to see if some nonprofits, when I was talking about head and heart, I mean, I just don't see just leaving that blank or just having, it will make that whole area less attractive for the businesses that are there if it's just dirt. Um, and it does make it look more run down, which I don't think is what anybody wants, is just to have nothing there. Um, if part of it, if a nonprofit, I think we need to shop it around before we start rehabbing and see who might be interested, how much they would be interested in, and then maybe rehab it in parts, you know? And then maybe if a nonprofit wants one, maybe a little diner will come in for one of the other ones and say, oh, now there's people, there's more people here that are coming and going. So I would like to take the opportunity to see what are the opportunities there if we rehab it, kind of put some feelers out to see who would be interested. In it. Maybe social services would be great. Um, who would be interested in what kind of partnerships we could have for this before we tear it down? Um, just kind of put those. Yes. Maybe the neighborhood needs to just look at Yeah, maybe they need to know what do they need there. If they need social services, what kind of services would they like there? Or would they not like there as well? I think that's important that we do have that input um, with the neighborhood and, you know, go into those meetings because I think that's, it could be a lot more and maybe, I totally get what Michelle's saying. It's like, we see all this potential there, but it's not in the right spot for what the buildings could offer. They've got great buildings, but not necessarily in the right spot. So I would like to see us put up feelers to see if the nonprofit and what what could we do? Uh, and Mayor, if I may, yes, uh, just a follow right up here. question right. to that is, are you looking at leasing or selling or both just exploring both? Uh, Let's see what's, uh, if it's a nonprofit, if they want to buy it, maybe we see what they're interested in buying it for. I or think leasing we should, or yeah, I'm, I'm all open. doors open if you're gonna keep the building. So. Yeah. Can I answer really quickly? Yeah, wait, first I have to go to, I have to go Bill. Bill? So, you know, I talked about, uh, you know, obviously the demolition piece. I'm assuming that the wood structures of the old city hall, the squad center, and the, nine, the old 911 building are probably the most, um, in most need of repair. Wood, de wood doesn't hold up as, be as good as brick does. So when we talk about re-roofing, you were talking about the, the wooden structures, not the brick on Western Avenue. Actually, the evidence building on Western Avenue is the one that would need some additional roof work within the five years. Uh, but to your point, uh, the call center is the, actually the area that is having some of the sewer line issues that would need to be addressed. Um, and so there are some special needs in that area. So would it, you know, my thought, not to demolish it and then leave it gravel throughout there, but if we were to turn that into a public parking area, those wood structures and the, the ones to the north there, nice little green belt in the front, you know, kind of green it up a little bit, a nice little parking area, and then that would allow those businesses in there to actually have some place to park. Mm -hmm. And then that leaves the 120 East Western Avenue building for us to potentially lease out because it's got storefront property, et cetera, et cetera, for this nonprofit thing. That may be a good middle of the road if that um, becomes the way, but I, so I'll just leave it at that. Wally? I have a question for the attorney. Um, I think I've already asked this okay. but months ago. Um, can our city I know our city cannot give a facility to a nonprofit to use because you cannot gift it. Generally, that's true. Well, how, what's the generally part? Well, generally, I mean, you're just going to get the constitutional, constitutional gift clause analysis, which says you can't give public resources to private entities uh, without compensation or, or consideration. So there are ways you could structure 
uh, an, an arrangement that we're receiving public benefit. Uh, maybe it's not dollars, uh, but maybe maybe they take over upkeep or remediation of the building, and that alleviates um, expenditures on our part. I mean, I, I think there's different ways you could look at it uh, rather than just a straight up lease for market value, if that makes sense. Okay, because smaller nonprofits don't have a lot of money and they can't pay huge high leases. Mm -hmm. So if our city wants to ne negotiate a lot of money for these leases, some of these nonprofits who do need a home and could provide human services to all our residents that need that sort of help, um, they're not gonna be able to pay a, 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 big, a lot of money because they, they don't have it. So uh, I would hope if our city is serious about uh, possibly letting some of the nonprofits lease our buildings that we are reasonable with the cost based on what they give back to the city. But truthfully, what I don't wanna see, I don't wanna see us abandon those buildings and just leave them the way they are because homeless people could move in and it just is inviting, uh, I think, uh, concern for that neighborhood if they, once people know that there's nobody there uh, I think we're in for um, perhaps some more concern. Yeah, I think my answer back to you is there are there sh could be some options there on how you structure that sort of arrangement other than just this is what a market rate lease is. Right. See, they and can't do I, I think there are rate. some ways to structure it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any more discussion? Brandon? Yeah, I, I like, I'm in favor of a mix of it, especially on Western. I think that I'm hopeful that that area will come back with more things around the airport, with maybe that that shopping center eventually having some more growth around there. And I don't know, but I could see, I'm open to a lot of different options there. So I'm hoping, especially the one off of Western there, we already have five businesses or four businesses there. If that makes the other one available to another business, there might, maybe there's something there. So. We have a chance to bring it back a little bit. Yeah, who knows? Maybe Billy. Billy bit maybe time. Billy Moore was lived right in that building. Mm -hmm. right <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. One yes, question. Joanne. The call center. Uh, did it have the most damage? Is that the one that had the most that you were saying? The well, I heard you say sewer, but was that mold? And I mean, it had multiple issues. Actually, um, that building does not have mold. Okay. And it did have some storm damage a few years ago, um, but all of that um, damage has been repaired on the roof in particular. Okay. I was just thinking back to the mixed idea of if, it, if a smaller a smaller facility um, had a lot of, you know, issues, bulldoze that one and open it up for the parking or for the green grass or something like that, you know, a mixed, mixed idea. Thank any, you. Any other discussion? Well, then, thank you very much. For, oh, yes. Brian? Mayor, if I may just uh, kind of wrap up, I know there's not a, a vote uh, in, during work session, uh, but just to recap the general direction, I, we've heard a lot of great discussion, a lot of great questions. Would it, um, does it meet the needs if we go ahead and do a solicitation of nonprofits to either buy or lease, find out what the interest is in each and or all of the buildings, and if we get kind of mixed reviews on that, at least see what we get, and then that may give us an opportunity to look at, you know, one of the alternatives is to remove some of the buildings, maybe not all, to allow for more parking because this area is very, um, has a lot of parking issues right now. So the, just for follow-up, does it make sense to go ahead and ping the nonprofits first, see where we go, and then come back with an update at that point and then look for other options? Let me look around the council. Yes. Yes, go for it. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Thank you. It was a nice presentation. I appreciate the information. Okay, I'm going to adjourn this meeting at 6 o'clock. We'll start our regulating. This meeting is adjourned.